Thank you, Sister Ors, for leading us into a time of powerful worship. Welcome again, brothers and sisters, to our online worship this Sunday. May God find you in perfect peace. So let's look at the ministries that need our concerns and prayers. So August is our harvest event month. As read in Romans 1, verse 16, it says, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. So let us be motivated, let us be inspired to just continue to harvest the seeds that God has planted all around us. I believe it is a time for us to be more compassionate and more aware of taking the time off to be kind and to care for the people around us and for the um, loved ones that are near us. So let's uh, let God lead us during this Harvest Event Month. For our scripture memories, uh, in Uku and Nankan Ministries, we have the same verse, which let's read together. It's found in Matthew 16, verse 19. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So we pray for Uku and Nankan Ministries that they may continue to pursue the, mem the scripture memory. For Canaan Ministries, we're already finished with our 12 scripture verses. So we review them, brothers and sisters. It doesn't mean that when we are finished with them that we don't need to look at them anymore. But the deadline for scripture memory will be this August 29. Please approach any cell leaders to memorize these 12 verses. God bless you for that. So for our Titan offering, our bank account for uh, Uku and Taipei Ministries will be the same. So you, you can just take a screenshot. And while the bank account for Nankan Ministries is a different one. If you're confused, just approach any of our pastors, Reverend Joseph or Pastor Babes, in this regard. May God bless us in our giving. And we would like, again, to invite every one of you to our online prayer every Wednesday morning. As you know, this Wednesday morning is a live prayer meeting, which is led by our Pastor Babes. It's at 10 a.m., and it's a Zoom meeting. So, uh, we do encourage you to be part of this online prayer meeting, and we do also encourage you to invite more people to attend this prayer meeting. I believe the more prayer, the more power we will bring uh, the kingdom of God into all of our own lives here. And on Thursday, there will be an online prayer meeting between 8 to 9, which is led by our Reverend Joseph Chua. Let's also gather ourselves. If you have already attended the Wednesday one, you are also welcome to attend the Thursday online prayer one. So may God bless us and we continue to pray for these ministries because we need prayer, brothers and sisters. We need prayer to move the hand of God. So why not, brothers and sisters, let's take this time. Let's all be in one spirit. Let's all raise our hands right now as we pray for these ministries. Lord, we acknowledge your presence right now. We acknowledge, Lord, your life that has become a part of ours. Lord, lead us. Lord, give us wisdom. Lord, show us your mercy and grace. Lord, during this pandemic, Lord, we need you. We need you, Lord. We acknowledge our own shortcomings, our own weakness, Lord. And Lord, we just want you to lead us into a place where we can feel and experience your peace because it is in that peace we will be still, we will be calm, and we will know that you are God. 
We lift up your name, Lord Jesus. Lord, as we ask you again to bless our harvest event month, Lord, it doesn't mean that we have stopped meeting physically, that we should stop doing your ministry. Lord, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord, we ask you to empower each one of us, Lord, to take time out of the 24 hours that you have given us every day to just show love, show compassion, show care to the loved ones around us and to the friends and to the people who still need Jesus in our lives. Lord, Lord, let your Holy Spirit, Lord, just lead us to know what to do. It may not be words, but it may be actions. It may be something that, Lord, you inspire and motivate us, Lord. So, Lord, we just ask you to guide each one of us, Lord, to use each one of us, Lord, as instruments, Lord, of your kingdom, Lord, because we will never stop, Lord, following you. Lord, continue to be with the three ministries, Lord, Nankan, Uku, and Taipei, Lord. Lord, just be with each member, Lord, especially to those who are struggling right now, Lord. Lord, we lift up our hands, Lord. We pray for these brothers and sisters, Lord. Lord, to just let you, let them know that you are there for us. And that you will be there for them, Lord, through every obstacle. Because we know, Lord, you have overcome. You have overcome. And we are victorious because of that. Lord, we just continue to depend on you, to trust in you, to acknowledge you, Lord, throughout all the things we go through every day. Because, Lord, we know when we follow your footsteps, when we let you carry us in your way, it will never be wrong. And you will always give our lives, Lord, you will make our lives more richer, more peaceful, and Lord, more abundant. We thank you. We thank you for all these things, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. So, we're going through our theme of I am an overcomer. So, today's topic is tearing down strongholds. It's found in the scripture, 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 to 6. Why not let's read them together, brothers and sisters. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete. So why not let's give the rest of the time to our reverend pastor, uh, Reverend Joseph Chua. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome again to our online worship celebration. You know, this month we are learning to be an overcomer. Uh, as the Bible tells us, you know, we are not fighting to be victorious. But we are fighting from victory. It is because in Christ Jesus, we are an overcomer. Just like uh, Romans 8.37 said, he said, No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who love us. Indeed, you know, no matter what kinds of trials, temptations, and whatever Satan has been doing in our lives, you know, we could always overcome, we could always come out victorious. Today, I want to share with you a topic about strongholds how to overcome the strongholds in our lives okay now how to tear down the stronghold that satan had built in our life let us go back again and look at the passage for today that is uh, in second corinthians okay chapter 10 uh, 3 to 6 okay let's all read together this again and allow the word of god to speak to us okay uh, start from verse 3 for though we live in the world we do not wage war as the world does the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. 
On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his words. Why not let us come before the Lord right now and let's pray together and ask the Lord to open our eyes to see the spiritual battle that is going on and how we could be able to uh, be an overcoming against, uh, overcomer against uh, the strongholds that uh, Satan has been building in our lives. Let's pray together. Father, we come to you, Lord. We thank you once again as you gathered us this morning to come before you, Lord, and to learn how to live out, Lord, a life of a victor. Father, we thank you because we know that we are an overcomer, Lord, in Christ. And no matter what we face, no matter what are the schemes of Satan, we could always be able to overcome them and we could rise up, Lord, from all those difficulties and we could be able to be victorious. This morning, Lord, we pray that you will lead us into your truth and expose, Lord, some of the schemes that Satan is doing and help us that we will be able to experience freedom in you. We thank you, Lord. We commit the rest of the time into your hands. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, as we come to the passage okay, from uh, verse 3, okay, uh, here Paul said in verse 3, he said that for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. You know, in writing this, Paul is telling us something. That as we live in this world, in this flesh that we have, you know, we, have, uh, we are going through a battle. You know, we face a lot of uh, battle. We have to fight a lot of battles in this world. But there was a battle that is not of this world. And that is why Paul said that although we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. And we know one thing, that we are waging a war, okay, spiritual war that uh, is going on, that uh, we are fighting. Now, what is this battle that Paul has been speaking about? Okay, now let's go back, okay, first it is what? It is a spiritual battle. As we know from uh, Ephesians 6.12, okay, Paul tells us, he said that for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. In other words, our struggle is not against men that we see. It is not the neighbor that we see. It's not the person that is sitting beside you or the people that you meet. But it is a struggle okay, that we have against the spiritual forces of evil. And we know one thing. The head of these uh, forces is called Satan. And in other words, you know, it is a spiritual battle wherein we are fighting against Satan and all of his scheme. He hurled on us all his temptation as well as trials in life. Okay? And so if we use the weapons of this world, we will never be able to win this battle. And so knowing that it is a spiritual battle, we know one thing. It is spiritual in nature and that we need God to help us win this battle. Not only that it is a spiritual battle. Another passage that uh, he continued to uh, tell us, Paul, he said, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they are divine power to demolish strongholds. And so in this fight, we have been given weapons. Now this weapon has divine power, okay? And that has the power to demolish strongholds. In other words, we face the work of Satan's. We face strongholds that Satan's build in our lives. Now, what does it mean by strongholds? You know, the word strongholds in the whole Bible, it just appeared in this verse. Now, a stronghold in the Bible, okay, uh, during the Bible times is a fort or castle, something almost impossible to conquer. In other words, if you look at strongholds, it means that it is a hold that is strong, that no one could penetrate, and it is impossible to conquer. And so during the time in the Old Testament, you know, they would build a lot of strongholds to protect them from the enemy, and the enemy will not be able, it is almost impossible for them to conquer it or for them to be able to enter it. Okay, so this is the stronghold that Paul has used. But in another sense, 
In a spiritual sense, what does it mean by strongholds? Stronghold is a sin or lifestyle that we cannot break free of. It is something that has been built okay, by Satan, no matter it is a sin or it is a lifestyle. Okay? So it is a habit or whatever it is that it cannot be, we cannot experience freedom or it is hard to break through. Okay? It is hard to break through. And that is why, you know, it is what we call by uh, uh, the, 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 the battle that is going on. It is not only spiritual in nature, but it is also wherein Satan is been building stronghold. And the Bible tells us we have this weapon to destroy. Now, what is this stronghold? How does it been built or how does it came to be? In verse 5, it must clearer. Paul said, we demolish arguments and every pretension that self itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And so here, when uh, the Bible said that we demolish strongholds, we are demolishing arguments and every pretension. Now what does it mean by arguments and every pretension? Every uh, logic, every reasoning that set itself up against the knowledge of God. Any reasoning that opposes the nature of God and oppose the word of God. Okay? And as these uh, arguments are being built up, it becomes a stronghold in our lives. And so it what? It captivates everything that is in us and that it leads us away from God. And so this is what we call by uh, the stronghold that has been built in us. Therefore, we could say that stronghold is a faulty thinking, a pattern based on the lies of Satan's, the, lie, the deceptions of Satan's, and uh, the arguments that came from Satan. Okay? So deception is one of the primary weapons of the devil because it is the building blocks for a stronghold. Whenever we believe something that is not true, it becomes something that is uh, very strong, that it uh, leads us into action, and at the same time, it is hard to take them away from our mind. And when the stronghold, the mindset, hold us hostage to it, and it hinders us from living a life according to God, or we'll never be able to pursue God's destiny or will for our lives. You know, there was one uh, famous uh, words okay, that uh, someone said okay, uh, by the person of Ralph Waldo Emerson. He said, we saw a thought and we reap an action. We saw an act and you reap a habit. We saw a habit and we reap a character. We saw a character and we reap a destiny. And so it all started in a thought. A thought would what? Would bring out an action in us. And once we act on it, it becomes a habit of life. And this habit will reap a character that is in us. And this character will determine our destiny. If we believe in a lie, then we would be living in deceptions and that we will be astray from the truth of God. And so this battle that we are involved with, not only it is spiritual, we are uh, waging war against Satan. And, but uh, the battlefield that Satan has been working on is in the mind. It is in our mind. Wherein he saw some uh, false lies or deceptions so that when we believe in it, you know, it affects us. It uh, uh, we become uh, we, we, we act in a way that is against God and uh, you know it rips a destiny wherein we are living in a lies and we are living not according to God's purpose in our life let me uh, cite an example there was uh, one night a man he drove his car uh, off a bridge okay and in that car his wife and children okay was there okay and uh, when the car went down, okay, so, so luckily the man lived, but the wife and his children all drowned. Okay. So after the police came and rescued, and uh, they were taken to, he was taken to the hospital, okay, they started to uh, uh, investigate okay, and to ask what really happened. They want to know if it is because of drugs, influence of drugs or alcohols, all or it is because of uh, the car is uh, lost control. Okay. And what that man said really shocked the policeman. He said that for several years before the accident, he said, there was a thought that enters my head. And the thought was suicide and murder. So it just keep on coming, keep on coming. He said that the thought consumed him every day. 
Not only it consumes it, consumes his thinking and his rational, and the thought becomes to grow more and more. Until that day, you know, he just did something that comes out of his mind. And so, you know, this is what he called by stronghold. When something has been deposited in our mind, and it becomes too strong that we cannot resist it, and so we will be directed by this thought. And so, if the thought is negative, now we would be living our lives against the will of God and against the purpose of God. And that is why for us Christians, you know, we face also these kinds of battlefield in our mind. We always uh, uh, face a lot of lies, deceptions that has been uh, given to us or shown us through the media, through a lot of means. And so a lot of times it affects our Christian life. It makes us weak and at the same time it uh, diverts us to the will of God and the purpose of God. And that is why for us Christians as we face those strongholds that has been built in our lives, we need to fight against it. We need to demolish them and we need to tear them down. Okay, So today I want to share with you from this passage how do we tear down okay, uh, young uh, strongholds that is in our mind. Okay. Now when we speak about this stronghold, you know, one of the very clear example is found in the Old Testament. You know, when God created the first man and the first woman, he put them in a garden and he said, any fruit from this garden, you could be able to enjoy it. Okay, it's good for, 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 uh, for the eyes and it is good for the body. And so one day, uh, Satan, okay, uh, in the person of a snake, in the, uh, in the form of a snake came and so he tempted uh, uh, Eve and he said, what did God say? God said, uh, Eve said, God told us that uh, any fruit we could eat, but the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, we should not eat it or even touch it. But what did Satan said? Satan started to input some lies in the mind of Eve. And he said that you will not surely die. No, you will not die. And then he said, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And so what Satan has put in the mind of Eve is that you know, you know what God said is not true. And at the same time, you know, God doesn't love you. He doesn't want you to experience what goodness, uh, good and evil, knowing good and evil will do. And so he is what? He is uh, limiting you from this. You know, God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. Is that that good? But God doesn't want to give to you. And so in all of this, it is against who God is and against the word of God. And at the end, we know one thing. Eve uh, ate the fruit, and so sin entered into his life, and in, it entered into the world. And at the end, you know, they have, be, uh, have, be, uh, have to be exiled from the garden where God has put them in, and they have to toil, and they have to live in this sinful world. And the same with us. And so how do we fight all those lies that Satan has put in our mind? And how do we tear down all those strongholds so that, you know, we will not be uh, deceived, but we will be able to live out the truth of God and we would be able to, uh, uh, to fulfill the purpose of God in our lives. Okay, so let us go back again to the passage that Paul has uh, mentioned to us. So in verse... Four, when Paul said that we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. And he started to tell us about the weapons that is being given to us. He said that the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. And so, although we are living in this world, but we are not using all the weapons and means of the flesh to win this. We cannot win this battle with our willpower. You know, a lot of times we worry a lot of things and we tell ourselves, do not worry, do not worry, do not worry. We use willpower, isn't it? But it doesn't work because it is spiritual in nature. But we thank God because God has given us this weapon. And here, Paul said that this weapon it comes from God and it has divine power. It has the power of God that has been given so that we would be able to demolish strongholds, demolish arguments and every pretension. Remember Ephesians chapter 6. Okay. It tells us something about uh, 6 verse 10 to 11. 
He said, Finally be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. So he said, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. It is only on Him can we be able to find power that will be able to win against Satan's stronghold and every work that he has been doing. And here it says, God has given to us not only in Him we could be strong. He gave us the full arm of God so that we could be able to take our stand against the scheme, the devil's schemes. So he has supplied us with a lot of weapons that we could be able to use. And in this passage, okay, when uh, we are not going to go to the uh, the details, but let me mention some of uh, uh, the the armor that God has given to us. He has given us the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And so he had given us every weapons in our hands that we could use but as we use all this when we trusted on god when we depend on god then it will bring out the power to defeat satan and so the first thing that we need to do in order for us to tear down the strongholds the lies that has been deposited in our mind is we need to depend on god's given power we don't depend on ourselves we don't de depend on our being disciplined or trying to think positive thing. You know, uh, one thing that uh, a lot of times we, uh, we are against positive thinking is it is more of a human, uh, we call it human ways of winning. So they, people would always say, think positively, think possibly. But, you know, it has no power. But when we come before the Lord, when we depend on God, okay, to think positively, there the power of God will come and there we will be able to uh, win against the schemes of the devil, uh, against all those strongholds that has been deposited in our mind. George uh, Geoffrey Bull, he was a British missionary to Tibet. And during the time that the, uh, the communist, Chinese communists rise up, he was captured and he was imprisoned. Okay. And so, they took every possessions of bulls of uh, Geoff, uh, Geoffrey, okay, his Bible, and then threw him in different prisons wherein he suffered terribly at their hands for three years. Now, in addition to the extreme temperature in Tibet okay, and the miserable physical conditions, he was always abused uh, physically and near starvation. Okay. Now, Jeffrey was subjected to mental and psychological torture that he feared that he would go insane. And so the mind that is in there started to come out and then there are a lot of negative that tell him that, you know, you will be insane. You know, you need to give up. You don't need to, uh, to stand on your faith because nothing will happen. God is not going to save you. And so every day there will be a lot of those Lies and then a lot of those uh, words or words from a voice from Satan that came and started to build up in him. And so he started to be afraid. But then he realized that he need to trust God for your know, strength to overcome. And so he come before the Lord and he prayed to God and said, Lord, help me. Although I don't have the Bible, but he's a missionary. He has been studying the Bible for all of his life. And so he started to do one thing, asking God to help him, bring him into the words of God. And so starting, he would start from Genesis. He would remember every stories, every details from the Bible. From Genesis 1, wherein God created the heavens and the earth. And then uh, at, until he comes to uh, chapter 12, wherein uh, uh, the story of Abraham. And then after that, he go from one, uh, one book to another book. Going back again, uh, thinking about it, reconstructing what it says, and meditating on the word of God. Okay. And so, he took six months to go all the way from, uh, from uh, Genesis until Revelation. Okay, he just go in there and then visit every book, get everything that he'd remember, reconstruct it, meditate on it, and he finds strength in it. And after six months, after he go through from Genesis to uh, Revelation, he would start all over again from Genesis. And for three years as he was uh, imprisoned, and he was tortured, but he finds strength in it. And when he came out of the prison, he wrote, he said that the strength received 
through his meditations on the word of God become a strength to him that overcomes all the negative thoughts that comes to him. He find power to be able to against all those lies that Satan has been putting in his life. And he has the, 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 the strength to uh, live out what God wants him to live. A life that continues to trust God and to move forward. My brothers and sisters, you know a lot of times, a lot of things would come into our mind without depending on the power of God. We will never be able to tear down or destroy all those lies all the stronghold that has been built in our lives. It is only through the power of God. And so when we depend on it, we will be able to overcome them. Okay. The second thing that we need to do in order for us to tear down our stronghold in life, not only we depend on God, not on ourselves, not on our disciplined life, not on our willpower, but on God's, uh, God's given power. In verse 5, not only that, the divine power help us to be able to demolish strongholds. In verse 5, it said, We demolish arguments and every pretension that set itself up against the knowledge of God. Arguments, there are a lot of arguments that uh, say that, you know, your God, you know, is not the true God. I heard uh, from one of our uh, members, he said that one time he was in the dorm and uh, his colleagues was debating with him. And he said, how many God do you have? And, uh, you know, our brother said, well, we have one God. And he said, well, how about Jesus? Is Jesus God? Yes, he is God. Is God the Father God? Yes, he is God. Is the Holy Spirit God? He said, yes, he is God. And so he said, how come you said one God? You have three gods. You know, he used a lot of mga arguments, rational arguments and pretension or mga high, uh, very, very high, uh, uh, what we call by arguments. Okay, very good arguments and reasoning. Okay, but it is against God, who God is, and against what God says. And so here, the weapons that have been given to us is that we could demolish all of this. Now, the best way to demolish all the arguments and pretensions, those lies, those deceptions that has been speak, uh, spoken to us, is to know what is the truth, isn't it? We always know. How do you find uh, that it is false? By knowing what is real. If you know what is real, you would be able to detect what false it is, what is, uh, what, what is uh, the falsehood or deception that is in it. And so for us as Christians, we cannot escape the lies of Satan. For every day we are being exposed to it through the media, TV, music, education, internet, people, you know. And what they said sometimes affect us, they affect the way we trust God, they affect the way we see God, affect the way how we feel about God. And so to counter all of these lies, we need to know the truth about God. Now the truth about God, what He says through His Word, not only know Him as our Savior, not only know Him uh, who has given us a lot of promises, not only know that when we call, He hears our prayer, but we need to thoroughly know God. You know, the more that we know God more, the more that we will be able to know what is truth, and whenever there's lies, we would be able to, uh, to see it and we would be able to recognize it. And so how do we know God? We should not only know God on what we needed. For example, we know God that He is merciful. That's why we come for Him's mercy. We know Him as a God who hears our prayer because, you know, we need Him. We always come in prayer. We should not limit our knowledge of God only through some of those things that we love. We need to know Him thoroughly. We need to know who He is. We need to know what He claimed who he is. We need to know all the, uh, the, the command that he has given to us, the warning that he has given to us. And so, the more that we know him, the more that we will be able to uh, know what is false and that we will, be, will not be deceived by them. Okay. Now, for example, you know, a few days ago, I received a telephone call. And as I listened to it, it was a recorded call. And so, on the other hand, the recording said, uh, you know, uh, this month, your uh, uh, telephone bill, you have not yet paid your telephone bill. And we are going to cut your telephone, yung. not unless you call us and then you deal with it. And so, he gave us, he gave, uh, in, in that call, it includes a number, okay, for me to call the customer service hotline. But after I heard it, you know, I just put it down. Why? 
because I know that it is a fraud. It is uh, a fraud from a scam group. Why? Because I know one thing. Any government, you know, they will not inform you through the telephone. You know, there are people who, who receive calls that uh, tell them that they have uh, a tax deduction, okay? So the, the government will be given back their tax. And so they need to go to ATM and then they need to do something so that, you know, they would be able to get the money. Those are fraud. Why? Because the tax bureau would never call you up. Any government will not call you up, but they will send you letters. Now, letters is their proof, okay? And it is also their records. And so whenever they tell you about something, for example, the bank calling you about your uh, yung, uh, deposit nyo and then about your bank account nyo, you know, it is all fraud. Why? They will never call you, but they will write you or they will text you or whatever. They will get in touch with you through letters. Okay, this is for their proof and at the same time for their record. And so if we know all of the scheme that uh, all those people are doing, you know, we will not be deceived by them. But if we don't know it, you know, we think that, well, it is good. Uh, uh, many years ago, I, uh, I received a call from uh, a person who told me that I win a uh, raffle from a department store. And so the raffle first prize, I win the first prize, which is a point two five carats of, 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 of diamond. Okay, worth about 80,000. Okay, I was happy. I said, wow, you know, I win a diamond. Okay. But uh, on the other hand, said, well, we are going to send you this, but before that, you have to pay tax for it. It is tax deductible. Okay, you need to pay tax for this uh, price. And so he said, you know, you go, go to the ATM and then you just uh, send us the money and then we'll send you, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the first price. And I, first, I was, you know, I was excited. That was more than 20 years ago. Okay, the first time uh, okay, I came to Taiwan for a few years. So I was excited. And so, wow, suerte yan na. You know, may diamond na. But then when I asked, uh, may I ask, uh, what kind of uh, anong department store where I win this? And he said, well, you win it uh, in a, uh, a department store in Hong Kong. And I started to think, Hong Kong? Hindi pa ako napunta dun na. How can I win something that I'm not there, isn't it? And so I come to realize that, you know, fake yan. They want me to send money for the tax, and after that, wala na. And so, after I heard it, I just put down the, tel the, the call, and the, the, the phone. I know it is a scam, okay? My brothers and sisters, you know, a lot of people are being deceived because they don't know what is real. They don't know what is real, and that is why they are being deceived. The same way with us as Christians. You know, it is easy for us to be deceived if we don't know what, who God is and what He had said. And just like what Paul, if we don't know him, if we are not maturing in our knowledge of who God is and at the same time of his word and all of his promises and what he had said, we will like be an immature children. We will be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Now this is what uh, Ephesians 4.14 said. If we are immature, then we will be like children. Whatever they said, we will believe it, and we will be blown here and there like a wind that blows the leaves. And so, may God help us. So, as Christians, if we're not growing in knowing who God is and what He had said to us thoroughly, you know, we will have a greater chance of being deceived. Deceived by Satan, deceived by a lot of truth that seems to be true. But here's, uh, when you hear it, as if it is true, but it is a lie. And so when we know God thoroughly, then we would be able to stand and we will not be deceived by them. And so may God help us. Now the third thing we need to do in order to tear down strongholds in life, not only we depend on God's power to demolish all those lies, we need to know God thoroughly. And it is true, a lot of means, it is true, the word of God as we read through. That's why it is important when we read through the Bible, at least we read once the whole Bible. You know, you will be able to know anong sinasabi. What are some of the things that God has been telling us? What are some of the warnings? What are some of the things that He has been revealing Himself to us? And then not only through our read throughs, it is through meditating on the Word of God. The more that we meditate, the deeper that we will be uh, having our foundations 
on our knowledge and relationship with God. And not only that, every time when we come to our worship or meetings, when we hear a message, we pay attention and let the Word of God come into us. And then we read our Bible, we look at our Bible so that we will be able to know that it is true. And at the same time, you know, we could be able to know God throughout a lot of my experiences in our lives. We need to be alert and we need to always come before the Lord and ask Him. Whenever we talk with God, we ask Him, God answers us and we hear from Him and we will be able to know Him more and more. May we grow in our spiritual life this year. May we grow in our knowledge, in our experience of God thoroughly so that we will be able to stand firm in our faith, not being deceived by Satan. Okay? So this is the second thing that we need to do. The third thing we need to do in order for us to tear down the stronghold in our lives is found in verse 5. Okay? Paul said that we demolish arguments and every pretensions. Okay? We demolish all those lies. And the best way to demolish them is to know what is the truth. And not only that, he said, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. He said that we take every thought, everything that comes to our mind, we take it captive, we imprison them, we tie them up, okay? we drag them, we bound them, and then we bring them to the Lord Jesus Christ. And then let God's word, let his authority come, and let him tell us what we need to do. You know, a lot of times uh, in our mind, there are always thoughts that would come. And uh, we allowed that thought to flourish. We allowed the thought to bring us to where it wants us to go. And a lot of times, what comes to our mind, you know, uh, because we are sinners, okay, a lot of them are all negative. Okay? And negative things came from Satan. And so, we need to bring all these thoughts into God under the authority of God and then to let God determine if it is true or not. And then to let God determine what is our uh, actions or what, how do we need to face them as we heard them in our mind. And so the third thing we need to do, not only depend on God's power, we know God thoroughly. We need to cast our thoughts under God's authority. We need to bring every thought to Jesus and then to ask the Lord to examine it if it comes from him or it comes from the devil and then to ask God how we need to respond to whatever thought has come to us why do we need that because in the Bible it tells us in God's word translation Jeremiah 17 verse 9 he said that the human mind is the most deceitful of all things it is incurable no one can understand how deceitful it is you know our mind is very deceitful Sometimes, a lot of times, we think that ito na, ito na, but it is all false. You know, we cannot depend on what we think. We cannot depend on what comes to our mind. We need to always subject them to the authority of Jesus to know what it is and if it is true. You know, we are, we, in our experience, a lot of times we are easily deceived by our own mind. For example, there would be times, diba, when we call out someone, and then when we call them, Miss call, but they never call back. There are times when we take someone and then they don't text us back. A lot of times when we are walking on the streets and we see someone and they did not see us, they did not uh, uh, say hi to us, and so what started to come in our mind, anong inisip natin? We would get angry. We would say, inisnab ako, ang yabang naman itong tao na to. And we have started to have a lot of negative. And, you know, that is where disharmony, it is where a fight started because we think that they intentionally doesn't want to speak to us. They snub us. They are proud. And, you know, we become angry with it. And so it destroyed relationship. It destroyed harmony. And a lot of times, it destroyed the church. You know, what if, I don't know if you have experiences, what if because he, that person is busy, he's, he, he did not uh, answer your call because he was not uh, beside his phone when you called and then when he saw it he was too busy and he forgot to call you again or he sees your text but because of busyness he was not able to he forgot to text you or when he was walking in the street and he was thinking of a lot of things that he missed you out is it possible yes you know for me i've always a lot of times i experience it for example there was one time when i was going to nankan and i was driving 
And so I was driving, and then there are things, a lot of things in my mind, and I start to uh, process them and think about them. And when I reached uh, on the way, I uh, napansin ko that I, wa- I was coming to Uku, and here, sa Tabina. And I said, oh, why am I here? You know, I'm not coming to Uku. I'm going to Nankan, but, you know, <laughs> I came here unknowingly because my mind has been what? It has been, uh, there's a lot of things uh, processing that, you know, I didn't na, na So I just came with the, you know, the road that I've been taking. And so I came here instead of going to Nankan. And so things happen. And a lot of times, my, our mind will play tricks on us. He would always come and then there would be condemnation. They would say, Tignan mo itong tao na to. Okay, he doesn't care about you. He doesn't love you. He hates you. And he doesn't answer you. And you know, there are a lot of negative things that comes. And the more that we think of, uh, of them, the more that we become angry, isn't it? And the more that, you know, it destroyed yung uh, love that we have. It destroyed the relationship. It destroyed everything that we hold dear to. And then it is where misunderstandings come out. It is where fight comes out. And it is where disharmony happens. It is in the mind. That's why Jeremiah said the mind is deceitful things. We think we allowed it to flourish. We thought that it is the truth, but it is not because, you know, our mind are always going in the negative end. At the same time, Satan is working and it is influencing us. There was a preacher who visited a young couple. And the wife said to him, you know, we are new Christians. And, uh, you know, right now we become Christians. We have been saved. But before that, you know, I've been living my life, a worldly life. I swear a lot. I party a lot. And I do did a lot that is against God in the past. But right now as a Christian, I'm not doing all these things. But you know one thing? Every day the past keeps coming back to haunt me. And so it came and he's destroying the peace of mind. It's always reminding me of what I've done, that God doesn't need, uh, that, God cannot con- uh, that God cannot forgive me, that I cannot change, that there is no, uh, no way, that, uh, you know, no use in being a Christian. And a lot of things come that he becomes depressed and he is, uh, you know, there are things that has bothered his faith and his trust on God. And he told this pastor and said, what should I do? And so the pastor said, he said that sometimes, uh, whenever something like this comes to your mind, I want you to do one thing. I want you to grab them, to tie them, and to drag them before the Lord. You just bring them before God and tell God, okay, with the power of God, you reject them. With the power of God, you ask the Lord to take them away. And not only to take them away, but to bring what a new thought, a positive thought in your life. And to bring the word of God in your hearts. You know, the Bible tells us, give us an authority that we have discussed last week. He said that God has given us, isn't it? Whatever we bind in earth will be bind for us in heaven. And whatever we release here will be released in us in heaven. In other words, when we bind all those negative thoughts that is in us, when we buy them and we bring them and we subject them, cast them under the authority of God, you know, God will release, will bind all those things and they will not come and bother us. And when we release something that comes from God, the peace, the joy, the hope, and the word of God, the promises, and God will release all of that that will come into our lives so that our mind will be filled with all those good things and we will be able to overcome those lies stronghold that Satan has built in our life. And so, how do we tear down the stronghold in our life? We depend on the power of God. Second, we need to know God thoroughly. Not only the things that we love, we need to know some of the things that He said, some of those warnings that He has given to us, and some of uh, how He revealed Himself to us. Third, we need to cast our thoughts under His authority everything we don't trust what we thought or what we believe in but we cast them under god's authority to let god reveal to us to let god examine it if it is true or not and that we will follow whatever god wants us to respond to whatever comes to our mind and when we cast out all those even the negative things you know we will experience something 
we will experience the peace of God. Okay? Just like the Bible said, cast all your cares upon the Lord for He cares for us. You know? Cast all our burdens upon the Lord. When we cast them before the Lord under His authority, God is going to bring something that is new, something that is uh, refreshing for us to be able to experience the joy. And we will not be deceived and not be controlled by these lies and stronghold that came from Satan. May God help us. So why not let us come before the Lord this morning? In our mind is the battlefield. And it is where Satan has always been giving his lies, building uh, strongholds in our lives, so that the more that it rises up, the more that it is hard to destroy it or to overcome. By our own will and power, we cannot. But with the power of God, we will be able to destroy it. With the truth of God, we will not allow Satan to build those strongholds, lies in our lives. And through the work of the Spirit of God, helping us as we realize all those negative truths, we bring them, cast them before God and bring them under God's authority. And we will never allow them to bear their fruit, to build the strongholds, but rather we would allow the Word of God, things that is good, things that is honorable, that would fill our hearts and that would help us to be able to live out the life that God wants us to. So as we close our eyes, maybe there are some thoughts that is going on right now in your life. There are some thought patterns, some fear, worries, or some of the things that is in your mind that God has been revealing to you. And God wants you to know that. And He's telling you that all of those are strongholds that came from Satan. It is a lie. You need to cast them before me. You need to bring them before me. Under my authority, cast them out. Maybe God is speaking to you. Maybe there are things in your mind right now. Why not let us all pray and bring them before the Lord and ask the Lord to come and overcome all those negative, destroy those uh, strongholds, those lies, expose those lies, give us the truth, and at the same time, to bind all those negative feelings and to bring upon us His joy, His peace, and His presence. Why not let us pray right now? Let us come before the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, shamana. Father, as we come before you, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. Knowing, Lord, that you are a God who loves us. A God, Lord, who reveal yourself to us so that in knowing you, we will be able, Lord, to trust you more and to experience you more in our lives. Father, we know one thing that Satan has been sowing a lot of lies in our lives. And a lot of times, Lord, there are strongholds in our mind that although we know it, Lord, but we are allowing it to prosper in us. We allow it, Lord, to bear its fruit. And a lot of times, Lord, it affects us. It destroys us, Lord, and it leads us away from you. 
Lord, this morning as we bring all of those uh, thoughts into your mind, into your hands, as we cast them, Lord, under your authority. Father, I pray, Lord, that you will bind them and that, so that they will not influence us and they will not control us, Lord. And that we will be able to be free to do, Lord, according to your purpose and to pursue the destiny that you had for us, Lord. Father, right now, Lord, as we cast them out, Holy Spirit, come right now, Lord, and fill us. Brothers, sisters, I just want to take this time to pray for some of you. Okay, I just want to pray for uh, some of you who are struggling with some thoughts, negative thoughts that has been there for many, many years or has been there that has been affecting you. I just want to ask the Lord right now to bring a deliverance upon you. And so wherever you are, okay, if you need prayer and if you want the Lord to give you right now a new strength for deliverance, would you please raise up your hands so that I will be able to pray for you. Although I cannot see you, but God sees you. And according to your hearts, He brings His work upon you. You just raise up your hands and I'll pray for you. Father, we come to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Once again, Lord, we come against every demonic work, every stronghold that has been built, Lord, in their lives, the lies that has been controlling them, that has been torturing them, Lord, and that has been holding them hostage so that, Lord, they are being swayed. They are living, Lord, a life that is not according to you. In Jesus' name right now, Lord, I pray that you will break the work of Satan, that you will release them, Lord. Give them a new strength and power and give them, Lord, a new truth that comes from you to be able to overcome, Lord, all those lies and that they will be able to rise up and to overcome them, Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray, knowing, Lord, that in you there is power, Lord. We, there is a divine power that is available for us. And right now, Lord, I pray, touch their heart and bring peace and love. Bring your truth upon them, Lord, and let them know, Lord, that you love them and that you care for them and that they will live out this freedom, Lord, starting today. Father, we just pray, Lord, that in all of us, may we see the work of God and the power of God so that we will be victorious, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And as we stand before you, Lord, may you bless each one of us. May the grace of our Lord Jesus and the love of the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be upon us until the day that Christ would come back and bring us into his glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So as we end our worship celebration today, okay, may you be able to experience freedom from some of those strongholds that is in your mind. Remember, depend on God, know God, read your Bible, meditate on His Word, know Him thoroughly, and then whenever any negative thoughts come, cast them out. And may this week, you will be able to find that in your mind, there is peace and joy and the presence of God. May God bless you and good day.